Well, hello and welcome to From the Rector's Study. It's the 17th of January, it's the second Lord's Day of Epiphany, and I really hope that you're well. I know a lot of people are finding things difficult at the moment, uh, it, so let's just start uh, by getting our, our minds in the right place as we hear from God's Word uh, and listen together uh, as we say our psalm together. Perhaps you'd like to join in with this. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God, how vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake, and I am still with you. Well, the psalmist there uh, reflects and reminds us of a truth that we so easily forget, don't we? That God is with us. Uh, that, that he's with us wherever we are. That, that however dark our present situation, God is there. Uh, however far we seek to run from him, he's there. That even when life takes us far from our expected paths, his hand holds us and he leads us and guides us. And so the, the psalmist, well, he ends quite naturally with wonder. God, you are astonishing. These, the thoughts of you, they're, they're too high. I cannot begin to grasp them properly. You know me intimately and perfectly, even before I was formed and born. And you love me, and you hold me, and you are good. And so the psalmist praises. And so let us do that too. Perhaps you can join in with our first song. Join with the angels, praising you forever. 
end of day. Praise you on the earth now, join you in creation, calling all the nations to your praise. They could see how much your worth, your power, your might, your endless love. But surely they would never cease to pray. Everything that, everything. Well, you may remember we're working our way through uh, the Gospels, through those eyewitness accounts of Jesus. Uh, we're, we're in Matthew, uh, so if you've got a Bible there, perhaps you'd like to grab that. And we're going to pick up uh, in Matthew 13, and uh, starting to read at verse 23. Jesus put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed seeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the, ma of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, that a man took and sowed in his field, it's the smallest of all seeds, but when it had grown, it's larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the branches of the air, the, the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leavened. All these things Jesus said to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he said nothing to them without a parable. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who has sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so it will be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send it his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears, let him hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we're going to think together in just a moment about what Jesus is teaching us there and what he has, what challenge he has for us uh, in those parables. Uh, first, we've got a, another song. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's one that, well, the first line of it uh, has become almost a, a, a cliche. Uh, God moves in a mysterious way and the way it's sometimes used, well, it sounds like it's a cheap and easy line. What's not so well known is the story of the man who wrote that, William Cooper, in the 18th century. A man whose life was full of suffering and sorrow and all sorts of mental health problems. The confidence in God that those words reflect was not easily or cheaply won. 
but when you know suffering like William Cooper did, like many of us do, that confidence is precious. God moves in a mysterious way, and he is good. This is a, one of the prayers that's set for today. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Have you ever asked yourself the question, what on earth is God doing in the world? Why doesn't God just sort of get rid of all the, the evil in the world and deal with all the, the bad people? Is God doing anything at all? Is, is God's work through his kingdom, is that going to lead to anything? What is God doing in the world? 
Well, if you've never asked yourself that sort of question, then, well, I think you're pretty unusual. Most of us have found ourselves asking that sort of question from one time to another. And it's to answer precisely that question that Jesus gives us the teaching that we've got this week. What is God doing in the world? And so often, to answer the question, what Jesus does is he tells us a story. Uh, he picks up on the, the image that he introduced last week. Last week we had the parable of the sower, you'll remember. Where the, the, the man went out to sow and the seed landed on different soils. Uh, the seed is the word of God and the different soils are the different people who respond in different ways. Well, Jesus picks up on that image and he, he builds on it. He says, okay, imagine then you've got a, a farmer. Same, same basic image. You've got a farmer, he see, sows seeds in his field. And there's, there's good thing, ones that come up. But while he and his men are asleep, an enemy creeps in and sows weeds. It's a, a, an entirely believable scenario. Uh, the problem was uh, big enough that uh, when the Roman Empire, they, they had to have laws against sowing weeds in your enemy's fields. You know, it's, it's a pretty straightforward way of, uh, of sabotaging his crop and making sure that, well, yours are going to get a better price at market. Particularly in an age before sort of uh, pesticides and, and all that sort of thing. And so, well, understandably, the, the man's servants, they're, they're worried, well, first of all, they're, they're mystified. Hang on, didn't we sow good seed? Oh, the master knows what's happened. Or should we pull it up then? Uh, no, don't do that. Uh, because, he says, well, if you pull up the, the weeds in so doing, you'll probably pull up the wheat as well. Because weeds like the, the darnel which is probably referred to here it's got a much thicker and stronger root system than, than wheat and so as you pull it up you'll it'll be grasping onto the wheat and you know, you'll lose the good stuff as well but wait till the harvest time it'll all get sorted out then the weeds into the fire the wheat into the barn don't worry How does that story help us? Well, Jesus tells us that the, the image here has shifted so that the field, well, that's the world. Uh, that the man who, who's sowing the good seed, that says Jesus is the, the son of man, it's him. Uh, the wheat, uh, that's the sons of the kingdom. The weeds, those are the sons of the devil. And the enemy is the devil. What is God doing in the world? Why is God not going to get rid of all the evil and all the bad people like that? Well, because to do so would damage the good crop as well. So God is bearing patiently. as we need to because Jesus says don't worry it's not as if God is doing nothing and is going to do nothing no it's that God is bearing patiently because he knows that harvest time is coming and that harvest time will be the very best time to sort things so that the weeds that now seem as if they're going to choke the wheat, well, they'll be thrown into the fire. And the wheat will be gathered safely into the barn and none of it will be left, lost. So the point is clear, isn't it? Keep going with patient endurance, knowing what God is doing in the world. 
But of course, that's not the only point Jesus is making. I mean, implicitly, there's a there's a warning: make sure that you are wheat and not weeds. Are you a son of the kingdom? How to be a son of the child of the kingdom? Well, that picks up on last week. It's all about the word. Is God's word taking root in you and growing up in you? If not, well, your life looks dangerously weedy. So pay attention to God's word. Because to do so it is to be in line with the whole direction of travel of the universe. That's, that's part of the point. But sandwiched between the parable and its interpretation, Jesus tells two short little stories. What are they doing there? He, he talks about um, another uh, man who went to, to sow, uh, but this time it's not wheat. This time he, he's just got a little mustard seed. You can barely see it. He sows it, and well, within a year it's become huge. But when it's fully grown, the, the mustard tree is vast. That's what the kingdom of heaven is like. Or, 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 or he says it's like yeast. Tiny little thing. You can barely see it. And once you've, you've kneaded it into some dough, well, you certainly can't see it. You can't tell that it's, it's there. Uh, but a small amount for the... The amount of dough that Jesus describes in his story, that could feed a whole village. That's what the kingdom of heaven is like, says Jesus. You see the word going out and it looks tiny and you think, oh, there's no point. God's not doing anything meaningful in the world. It's not going to have any impact. But Jesus says, just you watch. That seed's tiny, isn't it? There's no way that can grow to anything impressive. Then you come back next year. Where's that seed gone? Can't see it, there's just a huge tree. That yeast can't possibly do any good. Then you come back after a few hours and there's enough bread to feed a village. That's the work that God's word is doing in the world. It's secret and it's hidden and it looks small and it's insignificant. But it is working its way through and God is doing something amazing as his kingdom grows. What is God up to in the world? Oh yes, he's bearing with the world in patience because he knows that harvest time is coming. Uh, but in the meantime, his kingdom is going and it's growing. Which means, well, if you want to be on the right side of history, then line up with the what looks like secret and hidden work of God. Get behind the word going out to all the secret and hidden places, all the places where it isn't yet. All the people around you. Help them to hear the word of the kingdom. Because as that word goes out, it transforms lives, it transforms communities, societies, it changes history. In ways that you could not imagine. You doubt it when well, you just read a history book. You look back to 33 AD, you've got there 11 men, a few other people, maybe 120 people in turn. Within three centuries, 50% of the Roman Empire, the, the greatest empire that, that has ever existed, arguably. 50% within three centuries has become Christian. 
How, how has this yeast managed to leaven the whole dough? Secretly, quietly, almost without anyone noticing it. But it happens. You know, read the biographies of people whose lives have been changed, or go visit somewhere like um, when I was out in Tanzania. That 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 part of the country there is a part. Well, until the middle of the century, there were no Christians, pretty much. That the. Victorian missionaries who came out, oh, they did great work, but it was mostly on the coast. But inland, oh, that was still dominated either by the traditional religions or the Islam of the slave traders. And now you can see societies changed. Of people liberated discovering rights and, and education that the gospel brings as it goes and it grows. What on earth is God doing in the world? He's growing his kingdom in quiet, almost unspectacular ways, but in ways that lead to something far bigger than our imaginations could conceive. And yes, he's bearing patiently. But harvest time is coming, so get ready and be working for harvest time as you too spread that word of the kingdom. Amen. Well, we've got another song which reminds us again of the power of God's word.
the importance of letting God's word take root in our lives uh, and to shape us. Uh, perhaps uh, a practical question might be arising, how can we do that? Uh, can I offer just a, a couple of, of thoughts? What One is, um, if you've not been using them, uh, I am uh, sending out some Bible reading notes, uh, to, notes to help us pray and read the Bible through the week. Um, those will be uh, shared on our social media channels and on uh, the email update that goes out. Uh, if you've not got it through those means, but you'd like it, drop me a line. I'd love to, to let you have that. I know a number of people have found that helpful just for sort of starting to dip our toe into that water of, of letting God's word uh, drip into our lives every day so that it can be a constant companion helping to, to change us. That, that's, that's one thing that you could do. Um, and that that would be be appropriate whether uh, you're someone who would definitely call yourself a Christian or you're just not sure. Um, the best way to to find out is to look for yourself, uh, and that 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 would give you a, a chance to to do that. Uh, and another way is well, you may have seen that uh, I'm going to be running probably on a, a Wednesday evening uh, a group uh, exploring the the Bible's promises of of life, what it says about why we're here, how we can be happy, um, those big questions. Uh, I'd love you to, to join me um, if you're asking those questions or maybe you'd like to, to join our, our Bible study group on a, on a Tuesday evening. Um, th those are a couple of ways you can do that as well as uh, continuing to tune in uh, here on, on Sundays. Um, and well, one last thing to, to leave you with, we talked about the importance not just of, of letting God's word dwell in us, but us getting behind the word going out uh, as, as we seek to sow that broadly. I know a number of you are doing that in your own lives as you're help seeking to, to share the, the message with Je with, of Jesus with other people. Um, it, one other thing, if you're not doing also already and you are able to, uh, Perhaps you'd like to consider uh, making a, a regular giving, a regular donation to the work of the churches here. Uh, think, look at your finances. I know some people are are struggling. Other people uh, have have means available. If you're someone who has funds available, perhaps a, a regular giving. Just look at our, our website, uh, and the, you've got a giving page there, um, and give what you're able to. But let's uh, let's close with a prayer. This is uh, the collect that's set for today. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.